This is a little bit from near the middle of the Good Thieves. And in it, one of the children, a girl called Silk, has been arrested. And she's a great pickpocket and a great lockpick, but she doesn't have anything to break out of her prison cell. And so they need to work a way to get her out. A crow flew in through the front door of the police station the next morning as calmly as if it were coming in to report a missing package. Arkady, who had carried the crow on a streetcar down to the Brooklyn Bridge, stroking and crooning to her all the way so she wouldn't take flight, cast her in through the doorway. He whispered, good luck, and ducked out. The bird alighted on the desk, and for a split second, nothing happened. Then someone began to scream, get it out, get it out, it's unlucky. Don't be stupid, that's magpies. I don't care, it's filthy, they carry diseases. The policeman behind the desk took a great swipe at it, and the bird took off. She swiftly became affronted and confused. Crows, when affronted, are apt to dive bomb the nearest living thing, and soon pandemonium reigned. Silk sat on the bare bed of the barred cell she had spent the night in. She radiated despair. At the shrieks, she looked up and saw the bird. Her black feathers stirred a memory, and Silk's eyes widened. She approached the bars, a slow and steady presence in a room of screaming and flailing. And Silk, who remembered everything she saw, who memorised the faces on the street so she never robbed them twice, remembered the crow's name. Rinsky, she called, and the bird, harried now and panicking, swooped towards her, her beak still clamped around her prize. Silk stretched her arm out through the bars of her prison. The bird landed on it and dropped her cargo, nipping at her thumb before taking off again. Silk winced. Bird affection, she thought, is a painful thing. Eventually, the panic died down, and Rimsky was caught in a tea towel and cast ignominiously into the street. Nobody saw Silk slip something silver-grey into her stocking and sit back, quiet and hunched and waiting. She unplaited her hair and let it fall, a protective curtain over her eyes. It was a good thing that nobody saw her face, because, try as she might to disguise it, Silk radiated hope. All that Friday afternoon and night, Silk radiated hush and countdown. At last, as the clock struck three in the morning, the officer on duty laid his head down on his folded arms for an illicit nap, and Silk slipped the tweezers that the bird had brought out of her woolen stocking, twisted them four, five, six times in the lock, and crept on soundless feet towards the door. A man in the cell next door, ex-army, with soot in his nails and a dog on a string, saw her go, but he only rose to stand, snapped to attention, and raised one hand in a salute he hadn't used for many years. And Silk returned the salute as she slipped out into the New York City night. Thank you.